Hey guys, it's Kelly from fitnessblender.com and today I have a butt and thigh workout for you. All you're going to need is an optional set of dumbbells. If you don't have them, you can still get in a great workout. I haven't included your warm-up, so I'm gonna provide a link to one here. Otherwise, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so we're going to be doing exercises in groups of two, 45 seconds on, 15 seconds rest, and an A, B, A, B format. So we're starting off with squats. I'm using 12 pounds per hand for this. So pop those weights up there, you're gonna sink back, and then press up, squeeze your glutes on the way up, make sure most of your weight is in your heels, pull in your core, keep it nice and tight, make sure your eyes are up above and you're not rounding your shoulders. Inhale on the way down, exhale as you press back up. So you're gonna find that this is a fast paced enough routine that it ends up covering your cardio component as well. So we're gonna be working hard, very little rest. Two, one. All right, here's an active rest. So keep your feet moving. You can do whatever you want during these periods, just don't hold still. Okay, so next up we're gonna be doing a deadlift. So I'm gonna be using 24 pounds per hand for this. So grab those weights and get it started. So it's okay if you're not perfectly on time. The timer is just a rough guideline, so don't worry about it. Because like I said, that rest turnaround time is quick. So again, you're keeping a flat back. Inhale on the way down. Exhale as you squeeze back up. And make sure that you are squeezing. You wanna make sure that you really all the way up, squeeze those glutes, pull in your core, make it all count. Only go down as low as you can control. Make sure you're not letting your shoulders collapse forward with that weight. Under 10 seconds left. All right, so that's one round of those down. So we're going back to those squats. So I'm gonna bump up my weight a little bit this time. I'm gonna do 16 pounds per hand. Feeling a little stronger than I thought. All right, so grab your weight. All right, here we go. So sinking back, start that movement in your hips first. So you're sticking your butt out behind you and then you're dropping down. Only go down as low as you can control. So if your knees start to waver in or out, you wanna make sure they stay in line the whole time. So you might wanna either lower your weight or put a lot more focus into keeping that form clean. 14 seconds. You don't have to move at the same pace as me. Do whatever you can to challenge yourself and keep your form clean. All right, so next up we're going back to that deadlift. Ooh. So I'm gonna go for 28 pounds this time. Again, feeling a little more spitfire than I thought this morning. All right, here we go. Take a deep breath, start it up. Make sure everything is deliberate. Make every single rep count. Over halfway done. Squeeze all the way up, and once you get there, squeeze even harder. You have about five seconds left. All right, so next up we're doing a squat plus a lateral tap. So we're gonna be holding a static squat. We need eight pounds per hand, so 16 pounds total. Holding a static squat, and we're gonna take your feet out and tap as far as you can to the side. So sink into that squat, and then you're gonna take your foot and out, and then back in while holding that squat. So that one leg is doing all kinds of extra work while this other one is reaching. If you need to, you can tap, come back in and stand up. Do your squat again, nice and narrow. Tap, back in and stand up. So whatever you need to, to make it work for you. Otherwise, try staying low the whole time. 15 seconds left. 
See, I'm huffing and puffing my way through the strength training. This is the kind of strength training I love. Who needs cardio when your strength workouts look like this? All right, so there's one round done. So our next group is a deadlift to a lunge. So I'm gonna use 16 pounds per hand for this. So it's a combo move. Should be kind of fun. So weight's right in front of your thighs. You're gonna drop down for that deadlift. Come back up, squeeze. Drop into a reverse lunge. Come back up, deadlift. And then you know you're gonna do it on the opposite side. So for that lunge, you're dropping down right in between those two feet. Standing up nice and tall, weights at your sides. Try to remember, squeeze your abs, contract your core. It protects your back. And it's better than any crunch variation you could possibly do. Under 10 seconds. All right, so back to that static lunge, plus the taps. So 16 pounds total for me. Like I said, you can do this with no weight at all and you're still gonna feel it, so do what you can. So get that weight up there. Go into your squat, and I'm tapping out, and then back in. Make sure you're not holding your breath. That's our halfway point. You can always stop and take a break if you need to. Shake out your legs and get right back into it as soon as you can. The goal is to just keep moving. So if you have to, drop those weights. Your last resort should be rest. Five seconds. All right. So back to that deadlift plus a lunge. So I'm using 32 pounds total again. Shake out your muscles, take a couple quick breaths. Whew. All right, here we go. So down for that deadlift, squeeze back up, down to that lunge. Over halfway down. Keep it going, 10 seconds. All right, now onto our third group. So this one we're going to be doing a squat plus a side leg raise. It's me working those extra, uh, working the Outer thighs extra hard for this one. Whew, catch your breath. All right, here we go. Sink into a squat, press back up through your heels. Once you're here, come up for a side leg raise. So make sure, you notice I'm not throwing my leg up there. You wanna make sure it's nice and slow, controlled, deliberate. So you're using those leg muscles and you're also using your core. Quite a lot for this. Again, way better than any crunch. All right, 15 seconds left. Five seconds. All right, last one, there we go. All right, so next up we're gonna be doing a deadlift plus a kick out. And I think I'll stick with the same weight for this. So, oh, my weights are all sweaty. <laughs> All right, here we go. So we're gonna be doing a deadlift until you get towards the ground and you're gonna bend your knees, pop out, back up, pop your head up, and lift from the floor. So the other version of doing this is out, out, in, and just make sure that you're leading with a different leg each time. That's our halfway point already. I had no idea 
that this routine was going to be this sweaty <laughs> on paper. <laughs> like, this looks relatively, definitely a good workout, but didn't anticipate a complete sweat fest. Two, one. All right, so we're done there. So next up, going back to that squat plus the side leg raise. <sighs> shake out your muscles, shake out your hands from holding those weights. Kick your legs around a little. And here we go. So pop your weights up so you have room for that side leg raise. And out. Make sure you're not holding your breath. Remember, inhale on the way down. Exhale as you press back up. You're gonna be exhaling during the hardest part. Under 20 seconds. Keep it going if you can. Almost done, five seconds. All right, so we're going back to that kick out. Whew. All right, so a deadlift kick out. Here we go. So nice and slow down. Bend when you get close to the floor. Drop those feet out. Come back in. Get your back flat and lift. Squeezing through those glutes. That's our halfway point. Ten seconds. All right. So that is it for our first group. We're halfway through this with this, halfway through with this routine. So grab a quick drink of water. Not too much. Don't stop moving. We'll be right back in just a second. All right, so we're back for our second half. Remember, we're doing 45 seconds on, 15 seconds rest, and we're starting off with a ski squat plus an inside thigh raise. So I'm gonna do no weights for this one, uh, but you can hold on to them right here. So you're dropping down, feet nice and close together, and then bring your foot up. So kind of flex that toe and lift it up and across your body so you can feel it in your inner thighs. Make sure, again, you're not swinging or jerking. You want to be in control of that the whole time. So, Pull on your core, keep those feet nice and close together, and you're still doing all the same rules of a regular lunge. So you're, uh, you've got your back flat, and you're pulling in your core. You're starting that movement in the hips again, so stick out your butt behind you, and squeeze as you come back up. So different stance targets the muscles in a different way. Five seconds left. All right, so next up we're doing a deadlift with our toes in. So I'm going to be using 20 pounds per hand for this one. So if you can see my toes, I'm pointing them in as much as I can comfortably. Otherwise, all the same rules of a regular deadlift. So you're, you've got your weights in front of your thighs, dropping down as low as you can control, squeeze back up. And again, this is targeting the muscles in a different way than a normal deadlift. And you're probably going to feel that. If you don't feel it right now, you will tomorrow. So don't be afraid to lift lighter than you normally would if this is the first time you're doing this exercise. Over halfway down already. Inhale on the way down. Exhale as you squeeze back up. That's one down. Now we're going back to that ski squat plus the inside thigh raise. You can also wear ankle weights during this exercise if you want to make it extra hard. Otherwise, remember you're holding your weights right here. Feet nice and close together. Start that squat. Press back up. Lift your leg. Keep 
keep it going nice and smooth. Try to be rhythmic and graceful. It takes more muscles to do it that way than flailing around. Fifteen seconds left. So we will have very thoroughly worked the lower body after this workout. All right, next, those deadlifts with the toes in. So I'm gonna grab my weight. All right, so take a nice deep breath. Get your feet set up. Turn them in as much as you can comfortably. Weights in front of your thighs. Deep breath. Lower down. Press back up. Remember again, not to let your shoulders cave. So you're gonna wanna droop because the weights are heavy. So you get a little bit of an upper body workout too when you're forcing your shoulders to stay back, keeping your scapula from winging. Over halfway done. 15 seconds. Here we go, it's probably our last rep right here. All right, so drop those weights. Going into a sumo squat, so a nice wide stand squat. I'm gonna be using 32 pounds per hand for this. Remember, what I'm lifting, I'm just telling you that as a reference, it's in no way uh, a suggestion of what you should lift. You wanna be lifting a weight that is making it difficult in those last 10 seconds where you're just really struggling. You're watching that clock and wishing it was over, but your form is not suffering. But make sure you're challenging yourself. There's our halfway point. Just focus, focus on your form. Last one right here. All right, so for our deadlift category this time, we're gonna be doing toes out. So I'm gonna be doing 20 pounds per hand on this. And so opposite of last round, you want them pointed out as far as you can. And shaking down, keep a slight bend in your knees. Squeeze back up. Again, all the same rules of a regular deadlift. They're just Changing from the position of your feet. Should call these duck deadlifts. Over halfway done. Just 10 seconds. Last one right here. All right, so back to that sumo squat. I'm gonna stick with 16 pounds again. It's challenging, but I made it through the whole interval, so I'm gonna try to do it again. Three seconds rest left. All right, weights up at your shoulders, feet nice and wide apart. Sink down and press back up. So again, this foot position, all of these are the same. We're doing squats and deadlifts, a variation of these all the way through. But the slight variations in foot position make a huge difference in which muscles you're targeting and how you're targeting them. So we should be nice and sore from this tomorrow. I know I will be. <laughs> in between the break, my legs are already shaking. So we know we're doing something right here. 10 seconds left. Five seconds. Okay, one more. Here we go. All right. Okay, so back to those deadlifts with the toes out. So 20 pounds per hand for me. Hands are getting all sweaty again. Makes it harder to hold on those weights. All right, so toes out, coming down. Squeeze back up.
15 seconds. We only have one more group after this. Five seconds. One more rep. Okay. All right, next up we have a side squat plus a toe raise or a calf raise in the center. So I'm gonna be doing 16 pounds per hand, 32 total. So we're stepping out to the side, come up in the center and do that calf raise. So try to make it again, deliver it. So go up and squeeze. Don't just do a quick rep, make it count. Make sure you're not holding your breath. Find a breathing pattern that works for you. 15 seconds. 10 seconds. All right, one more rep. Ouch. Okay, last set of deadlifts here. I'm gonna be doing a wide deadlift. So I'm gonna go for 24 pounds for this. Try my hands off so I can actually go along with these things. All right, so feet are nice and wide and doing a deadlift. Another variation of a deadlift. And if you're wondering why so many of our lower body workouts have squats and deadlifts in them, it's because they work. It's because they're the best exercises you could possibly do for your lower body and because they work the core as well. So. If you're wondering why they make a frequent appearance, it's because they are so effective. 10 seconds left. Five seconds left. All right, there we go. Okay, so one more round of each of those and we get to do a cool down. So we're going for 16 pounds per hand here. So we're doing that wide squat plus the calf raise. All right, pop your weights up. All right, here we go. Down to one side. In the center, calf raise. And again, remember to really squeeze. You wanna focus, squeeze those muscles. Make it burn. At this point, if you want to, again, the, the idea is to just keep moving. So if you have to drop the weights to keep moving, do it. Just don't be afraid to modify. All right, so back to that last round of wide deadlifts. All right, grab those weights. Here we go. Halfway done. Ten seconds, only ten seconds left and we are completely done, except for a cool down. Keep it going. One more rep. Okay, so that is our strength training routine. Oh, definitely felt that. So, let's start cooling down a little bit. Shake out your hands from holding one of those weights. You can stretch your wrists, roll them around a little bit while you're Kind of bring in your heart rate back down, which should be up, by the way. And if it isn't, you're going to want to think about possibly lifting more. So there's no reason that anyone shouldn't be huffing and puffing or sweating after that routine. All right. So kind of kick yourself in the butt, kind of nice and slow, apologizing to those leg muscles. Kind of 
freestyle, stretch it a little bit. All right, so we're gonna start with toe touch sweeps. So we're gonna go in a circle down to one side, kind of hang here for a minute, and slowly walk your way over to that other side. Rest at this other foot before you come back up. You'll lean back a little bit, get a stretch through your core, and then roll down the opposite way. So you should feel this through your lower back as well as your hamstrings, the backs of your thighs. And right here, through your sides, give your torso. So one more in each direction. So you should start to notice that your breathing is becoming more and more calm. And the more you work out, the faster that starts to happen. It's kind of a fun thing to notice where you'll be doing a HIIT workout and before you know it, you think you're just dying and you need oxygen. I'm gonna do a quad stretch now. And then all of a sudden, you feel like you could go again. And the, like I said, the more you work out, the faster you'll recover from things like that. It's kind of a fun perk. So you're stretching, pulling this foot up towards your butt. You can always uh, use something to balance if you need to. And yes, there's a wall here. <laughs> Doesn't go on for infinity. All right, now we're gonna switch sides. So pull up that opposite foot. So again, you should feel this through the front of your thigh, right in your quads. All right, now we're gonna do an inside thigh stretch. So plant one foot, keep it straight, and then lean over into this other. So you should feel this through the inside of your thigh here. So kind of lean away from yourself as much as you need to and feel it. All right, now press up, straighten this leg, kind of walk your way over. Enjoy the stretch in the center here for just a second. Kind of rock back and forth. There's always, it's always gonna be specific to you, but there's always tight places that you can kind of move through and it feels really good. So find where you're tight, wiggle around a little. Now drop to this other side. I'm gonna stretch the opposite inside thigh. All right, now come back to that center again. One more second here. Take a deep breath, come back up. Now we're gonna stretch the outside thigh. So crossing over your foot and then leaning away. You should feel a good stretch down this, uh, your side, your obliques here, as well as the outside thigh. All right, switch sides. Switch your foot positions, lean away. Oh. Try not to fall over. It's easier said than done after a tough routine. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna walk out into a downward dog. So slowly forward, fold forward, walk out. And then you're gonna be trying to keep your heels on the ground while you try to press your head between your arms. Think of your of being lifted up by your hips. All right, now we're gonna lift one leg up into a split. Don't worry about it if you can't, if you don't have very much range of motion, it's totally fine, just do what you can. And then bend at the knee to open up a little bit. Kind of stretch the front of that torso, your core and your inner thigh and hip flexor, as well as the hamstring of the leg that's on the ground. I'm going to come back down and do that on the opposite side. Get that other foot up there. Press up into a split. And then bend at the knee. All right, so now we're going to tuck back down here. I'm going to stretch our calves. So just bring one knee down and then keeping that toe on the ground act like you're trying to press into it until you feel a stretch. You can even really get up on it if you need to to put some weight into it to get that stretch. All 
All right, now the other side. All right, now we're gonna do a uh, deep glute stretch. So you're laying flat on your back, pull your leg up and grab behind that knee or behind the thigh of the leg that is bent here. So you should feel the stretch in the hamstring and glute of the leg that is folded over. So pull it in as much as you need to to feel that stretch and then again, if you wanna rock around a little bit and find where you are tight, it's a good way to treat those sore muscles to a stretch. All right, switch sides. So you're gonna wanna drink lots of water when you're done here to replace all the water that you just lost through sweating. You're gonna wanna eat a healthy meal as soon as you can after this. Forget about uh, shakes and meal replacements. Go for real whole food. Fruits and veggies and whole grains and nuts, all kinds of good stuff like that. The fewer ingredients, the better. All right, now we're gonna do a torso sweat stretch. So folding that over, try to keep your shoulders on the ground. So you get a good stretch just through your side here. All right, switch sides. and let it relax. So we just got in an awesome uh, lower body strength routine and a cool down. So like I said, make sure that you drink lots of water and eat something healthy as soon as you can. Otherwise, good job guys, this workout is complete.